eyes down for the other one. Morning folks, Monday, side project, in getting all this stuff out of here in order to light the fire, which I've lit, and which is not circulating, or at least it's not circulating properly, I don't know why, I've bled it again, there's no air in it, and I can only come to the conclusion that there is something blocking one of the pipes. I know it's not in the heat exchanger because I've blown through that and it's perfectly clear. So when this burns out, it's shut down now, when it burns out and goes out, I'm going to have to take the pipes off and just clear them out, just blow air through them and find out what the hell is going on. I mean, you know, this doesn't make any sense at all. Anyway, because I nearly spilled the sand, which fell off, that, which was actually, I thought was a, was a side shelf, but it isn't. It's just where the motor's been mounted, and uh, it only fit, fitted one side. So I've taken that off. I'm now going to put some bits of angle line on there, one at that end where there's one missing, and one in the middle, put a bottom shelf on, and then I may just use that as a middle shelf to give us a nice storage unit on wheels that can be wheeled about right why have I got drawn into this I have no idea but every day in every way we're getting a little better and a little better so let's carry on once I've started it now let's carry on Fully automated. It's almost CNC, isn't it? So there we go, folks. After a day of massively fast bodging and fruitful creativity, none of which I filmed. What a prat I am. We have a metal top bench on wheels with extra storage space. Superb. And I've just got one more job to do to it tomorrow. And that's just to lift those legs at that end because it doesn't sit level at the moment. So I need to put a foot on either end. But not a foot, maybe an inch, maybe an inch and a half. That's all. So a little pad or a bit of angle iron to extend the legs so that it sits level. And there is a moulding bench and possibly... A vice mounting as well, somewhere to put a vice on for in here. It's already had a vice on it. I suppose I could cover those scars up with another vice, couldn't I? Who knows? We'll see. That could be good actually. That could be good covering those scars up. And it wouldn't have to be permanently mounted on there. But a vice, I'd, I'd struggle for a vice in here. What I was going to do, what I am going to do, is get one of those leg vices, probably that first one with the bit of blue paint on it. That was immaculate when I got it. It was brand new. I don't think it's ever been used. Uh, it's rusted in storage. But yes, yeah, probably that one on a stand. I keep saying this to you, don't I? On that stand there. Anyway. This is a sign, this is a sign folks, when I get sidetracked into something like this, it's a sign that I need a break from what I'm doing. So I need, probably needed a break from that, but I shall be back on it tomorrow. I found some metal that might just be the right width for a belt guard and it's already folded. But before I do that, I've got to just finish this lever, get this lever bent sensibly and uh, make a stop for it so it doesn't go down any further than there. That's pl plenty of uh, 
What am I looking at? Where's my square there? Plenty of clearance there. So I want to stop probably off there. Just under there with a piece of a round bar probably with a piece of rubber slipped over it and maybe a hook on that end. Right? Piece of rubber slipped over it. No, maybe not a hook on that end. Piece of rubber. Stop it rattling. That's on. That's off. Right, I've ordered a I've ordered a shorter belt. I've ordered a 50, A51. So an A51 and an A53 should do it. But when it arrives, I can try it on and I'll know then whether I need to be an inch either way. You can actually buy them in half inches as well. Uh, so you could buy a 50 and a half or a 51 and a half. But they're special order. Uh, although the big bearing people stock them. So there you go. Right. That's all for today. I hope I haven't let you down by being madly creative. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Just as a little aside, it's still Monday. I'm still here. I've had the boil it today. It didn't circulate. So it wasn't the pump. So tomorrow, what I'm thinking of doing is taking those two elbows off because they're screw on ones and they're easy to get off. They're easy to dismount, easier than these to dismount. Dismount it there, blow through, right through the uh, right through the heat exchanger and back to here. And then we've confirmed that we've got no blockages in there, I'll just blow through the compress there. And then start going down here. Make sure we make sure we can blow through the boiler and then see what the hell is going on. Because I've no airlocks. I've tried bleeding it with the pump running, I've tried bleeding it with the pump not running. All I get out of there is water. So as far as I can see I've got no airlocks. I'm sure that putting the pump onto three with this smaller circuit would shove an airlock through. Crash. And it hasn't done. So I'm so frustrated with it, I'm still annoyed with it, I don't know what the hell's going on. And uh, I'm going to have a go at sorting it out tomorrow. So I'll see you then. Morning folks, Tuesday, and I'm draining down again, because I'm going to get to the bottom of this, one way or another, today. And the first thing I've noticed, is that the pump, which is on the return, and pushes water back into the boiler, when you turn it on, makes no difference to the speed of draining off. something very strange going on here because that's not now making a noise like it was anyway it's draining off so I'll go and open the air bleed at the other end and uh, we'll get the rest of the water out and then we'll start taking elbows off and blowing compressed air through the pipes I'm also going to uh, strip the pump again because I should have put that on that way around because that is now stopping me getting to this nut which was a daft thing to do, but I thought, oh, I'll put that at the top, it's easier to get at. Well, yes, it is, but uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work for anything else. So there you go. Right, onward. Right, well, as you may be able to tell from the water all over the place, I have taken the pump off, taken this pipe off, blown compressed air up there, taken this pipe off here, let it all come down there. Now there was at first resistance and then the resistance disappeared and a load of water came out. So whether there was a bit of PTFE tape across one of the outlets and I've popped it off or not I don't know. But it seems to be pumping better because when you turn the pump on initially it actually over pumps a little bit and you hear the water run into the uh, into the tank but it's still making this can you hear that 
Now that could be just the fact that I've put quite a lot of fresh water into it, although I've put the old water back in again to maintain the, uh, the leak sealer. It could be air. I suppose it could be because it's such a small circuit. But the pump's only set to one. That's two. That's three. That pump does sound like it's cavitating. I don't know. Anyway. Enough. I've bled the pump. The pump is now bleeding properly like it should do. Uh, I've taken the bleed screw right out of the uh, right out of the heat exchanger up there, and it and it uh, it poured water out. It really poured a jet of water out. So I'm quite happy that that is full to the top, because that bleed screw is higher than the uh, higher than the top of the uh, heat exchangers. So I'm going to light it again and see what happens. Don't ask. Just don't ask. Anyway, I've done it. It's not actually cold, to be honest. It's uh, bloody wet, though. Second day of constant rain, this. It's fetched all my apples out of the tree, more or less. There you go. A dank, damp, Misty lantern. Can you see the mist over yonder hills? The trees peeking out. Wobbly camera work. Catch you later. And it's still not circulating. But could this, wrong way up, could that? be the solution. ABV, automatic bleed valve, 22mm T, take that off, put that on in its place, because I think this pipe is airlocked, I think this horizontal pipe is airlocked, right, the heat comes up to here, gets as far as about here and stops. And that tells me that that pipe is airlocked. Right, so if I put a bleed on there, that should let it out. Let's strip it down and give it a try, for Christ's sake. Let's have this fixed. Right, folks. It's 5.03. The fire's gone out. It's it's really good at burning all the wood is that thing. It burns the wood right away to the last little bit. Unfortunately it's still not circulating. I have gained some improvement by fitting that automatic bleed valve up there. We're now getting heat to about here. But I'm convinced, I'm convinced that it's either a blockage in the uh, in the heat exchanger which is very unlikely because I'm sure I blew it through and I'm sure I cleared it but what I'm going to do tomorrow is I'm going to pop to the plumber's merchants and I'm going to get another automatic bleed valve and another couple of T's uh, with a 15 mil branch and then we'll see and if that doesn't cure it, I'm going to take the heat exchanger down and uh, see what the hell's going on. Because it's almost, it's almost time for heating. I mean, it's not been cold today because it's been raining all day, the same as yesterday. But it's almost the time for heating and I want it, I want it working. I want it working so that later on I can come here quite happily in the depths of winter light a fire and know that in half an hour it's going to be lovely and warm which at the moment I can't so guess what I haven't touched today I haven't touched the home book 
got that jacked into level position but didn't cut the legs because I've been so bothered by this. I've got another ABV there with an elbow that would should work with it but unfortunately that doesn't have the rebate in it to take that. Now what I could do is take this bush off here, stick it on the lathe and machine the rebate into it. And that's maybe what I will do tomorrow. But I might buy another one anyway. There you go. Right, I've had enough, I'm going home. I have to pick up Rivetas on the way. Bye now. Morning folks. Wednesday. What a difference a day makes, eh? Clear blue sky, not a sign of rain, everything is drying up and my heating still isn't working. There you go, I don't know what to do. I was going to call in the plumber's merchants this morning and get some uh, some vent tees for up there or make up some vent tees for up there but I'm not sure that that, that we would do any better than actually just the top of that where the, directly above that pipe is a wooden beam right and I can cut a slot in that wooden beam because it's not doing anything anymore it used to be over a window but it's not doing anything anymore so I can cut a big slot in it and lift those pipes up so that it's going uphill all the way to the uh, to the heat exchanger and then we know it's not airlocked. I've lifted those saddles there, as you can see. That runs now uphill all the way. It's just that corner that's a little bit down. So if I can lift those up, we might be able to get it. Let's have a go. And herein lies the problem. High water level. Funnel full of water. The funnel's leaking, so ignore the trickling water. Much lower pipe with nothing coming out of it, and nothing coming out with the bleed screw either. And yet I can blow compressed air through it. Compressed air blows through it easily. So it looks like we've got something in the link pipe that's flapping up and blocking the whole plot. So I'm going to take this top off, take the link pipe off and check it. What else can we do? This looks like something that moves out of the way when you blow compressed air through it, but when you try and pump water through it, it's blocked. What a pain in the backside, but at least we may have found it. There was nothing in there and nothing in there. I've had these two off, but look at that. That's just sitting in there. No water coming out of there. I've slackened this bleed screw off. No water coming out the bleed screw. So it looks like we have a some sort of flappy... Nothing coming out of there either, look. And the level's only dropping because the funnel's leaking. Right, folks. I'll get this top off and bring you back. Well, that's a bit baffling, folks. There's our water level up in the top of the funnel. I've already filled this side and let the water run out of there, put this back on nothing the bleed screws out the pipes off nothing it won't run down there so the next thing to do is to take it over to the door put a hose pipe on it but what's going on I don't understand I simply do not understand why it won't circulate Makes no sense at all. Right, let's find out what's wrong with it. All right, folks. I've run cold water through it under pressure. And I've actually filled it with cold water. And I've put a valve on that end. And I've put a stop end on that end. So we can fit it back 
filled with cold water. So we know it's not airlocked, if it was airlocked. I did notice there was some brownish brownish water came out when I forced it when I forced it through with the hose. But nothing that you would say would ever block it. Anyway, it's flowing freely now in both directions, so let's put it back up and see if it'll circulate. Who bloody knows? I'm beginning to get baffled and annoyed. And wish I'd never come. Never mind. Right folks, she's all back up and I'm just pumping the, uh, what would you call it, the coolant, it's not coolant, the, uh, the heating system fluid back in with the stirrup pump. Unfortunately, my stirrup pump handle is suffering from terrible woodworm and it's given up the ghost. Never mind, it is a wartime one. Well folks, I got a bit wet, in fact quite a lot wet, but I refilled the tank with the stirrup pump because I knew that if I left the valve on and let it run, not only would it put loads of fresh water in and I wanted to put the leak sealer back in, but it would also start to run out of the open ends of the pipes uncontrollably. And so I filled it up and filled it up and filled it up and nothing came out the end of those pipes. And I thought, well, this is very weird, what's going on here? And so I turned the pump on just for a split second and nothing came out the end of the pipes. So I thought, this is even weirder. So I kept flashing the pump on and off and on and off and on and off and all of a sudden there was a gurgle, gurgle, gurgle and water started draining down there and started coming out of those pipes over there. So I quickly reconnected them with water going everywhere and soaking me a bit but never mind. I quickly reconnected them and now listen to this. If you can hear it for the passing traffic. No surging. Quiet pump. Which means to me that she's circulating. And may I say, and I'm sure you're saying the same as well, thank the Lord for that. So, does anybody watch Plum Like Tom? Because I watch Plum Like Tom, I really like Plum Like Tom. He's very good. And uh, he always says, oh, if, you, if there isn't a bit of water about, there's no plumbers on the job. Well, I'm afraid I have to agree with that today because I'm wet through, the workshop's wet through, everywhere's wet through. So what I'm going to do now, for the last 30 minutes of the day, is have a brief tidy up. And tomorrow I will not subject you to any more of this central heating silliness. Tomorrow... I shall light the fire and go back on the Kovmac. You'll be glad to hear that. And so will I. Bye now. Morning folks. Thursday. And glad to report that the uh, heating system is cured and the uh, <coughs> the day is lovely so I don't need it. <laughs> anyway first job is to tidy up this ship pit and then second job is to just give Keith a hand dumping some old freezers and then Holbrook let's get on with it
And there we go folks, just a bench to finish off. Of course it's all been crammed back in here like it was before, but it doesn't matter. Because I don't need the heater. Because outside, as we used to say in West Yorkshire, it's cracking at flags. Flags, in case you didn't know, were paving stones. And it was the sun that was cracking them. Right, onward. Right, folks, a bit of surreptitious bending. And we have an operating arm. Might be coming a bit too close to the chuck, actually, but... Nah, that'd be right. Piece of rubber tube on there. Probably painted red or yellow or something. Might want just a bit more bend around, but who knows. Right, next thing we want is a stop. There. Just to stop it going any further than that. So where do we put the stop? Could we put the stop on there? I suppose we really could. Yeah, maybe we we'll maybe maybe put it on that end. Maybe put it on this end, straight out from there. Might be better off. Might be better off on that end actually. Just to bring that down to a positive stop there. I don't know. Keith will be here in a minute, we're just going to move some refrigerators, some old scrap deep freezes, and then we uh, have to crack on with this. Well folks, somebody last week said you could do with fitting an older starter, an older looking starter, and I agree. That uh, Auto West, Alan West, is a bit too modern looking. Now the starter it would have had on, originally, can you see in the dark, would have been one of those, which is a startette, which is 1930s, 40s, which is the correct era, but they don't have a coil in them, so they're not, they don't have a no volt release because they've no coil. If it's power fails, Drill stops, but the start stays on. So if the power comes back on, the drill starts up by itself. So that's not a particularly good thing. And so I had a rake around and I found this one. Which is the original starter off the Kovmak. Which started that behemoth of a motor which was on the Kovmak. Right? That's a single phase reversible motor, believe it or not. But there's a problem. There's something not right about this. This box, as far as I can remember, yeah, see, single phase 7 to 15M. As far as I remember, this box is from an Allen West starter. And the Allen West starter fixes there and there. Whereas the normal MEM ADS starter fits here, but there's nothing there's nothing on it. It's been that's been robbed and that's been used as a fixing to fix it through the knockout there. And the problem with that is that when you put the starter inside the enclosure, look how close those connections are to the uh, Look how close those connections are to the metal. In fact, unless you get it set right, they're going to touch. And what triggered me to that is the fact that, in actual fact, at some time, one has touched. Not that side, but certainly has touched at that side. You can see the splash in the aluminium. So, much as I would like to fit this one, I'm not going to, because it's not safe. And I know now, I know now that this is cobbled together. I'm pretty sure that that's an Allen West enclosure, I'm not sure. Definite, but... I haven't, 
I don't think uh, this is the early type Allen West which used to have oil dash ports on it I think I'm not sure it could just be an earlier one of those and that's how the later guts fitted it look, I mean this worked, I know it works, it's a good starter but uh, I can't use it, never mind just cutting me stop to length she goes. Right folks, after a lot of messing about getting it clamped because there was a bolt at the other side with a plate on it that I couldn't get a clamp square on, I finally got it done. I've bent the arm a bit more and there it is. That's off, that's on and that's plenty out of the way of the chuck. In fact I think it's ideal. That's really, that's really what I would, uh, what I would have expected. Right. Next job. I think that's, I think that's finished. I may, in the fullness of time, put a little pad on there, just to, just to put a bit more pressure on when it's in gear and I may also in the fullness of time put another spring on there just to increase the uh, the pullback but that's that will be a matter of in the fine tuning uh, but for now I think we can safely say that's done I might bring that round a bit just so that's horizontal pleased with that, that's good in, out, lovely. Right, belt guard, belt guard, belt guard, and then tear it all to pieces, complete the welds in whatever position we're in, drill the holes, and paint the bugger. On we go. So, a belt card. Here's some potential belt guard material. But I've come to conclusion that a lightweight box section frame needs to be fabricated it needs to be pivoted up here, maybe even on the top of there. Right, and those two aren't cut off yet, and that weld isn't finished yet, that's just tacked in place. Uh, and it needs to be pivoted there, and it needs to lift up, click, click, like a car bonnet, and go down again. It's going to need a couple of struts onto there and there with rubber snubbers on the end to stop it rattling so I think the first thing is going to be not a sheet of tin but some lightweight box section so I shall proceed I shall proceed to sort out all my lightweight box and see what I've got I think I've got quite a lot actually let's have a rake see what we can find there we go folks, basically I've got plenty, but unfortunately it's almost home time, so that's going to be a job for tomorrow. Tomorrow I've got a free day, a completely clear day, so I think it's going to come straight out from there, over this, and then bend down right so there'll be a joint there to weld there'll be a piece across the back and then we're going to put a bulge on the side to go around this so there'll be two pieces down there like that 
piece down that side of the belt, piece down that side of the belt, and then there'll be just a bulge, probably just in tin work, to stick out to go as far as that shaft, or just past that shaft, and I think that's uh I think that's sufficient. I don't think we need to I don't think we need to uh I don't think we need to guard anymore. I'd have to be I'd have to be lead can you see me here? Let's just see if I can do this. I'd have to be leaning right over here to uh to get caught on that, so I don't think that's gonna happen, is it? No, of course it's not. Right, so that's what we're that's what we're gonna do. That's what we're gonna weld together tomorrow. I've already got the welder out and into its uh setting on position. So I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye now. Morning folks. Friday. We talk about Indian summer. It's cracking flags. Gorgeous. You probably won't be able to see over there for the brilliance of the sun, but you can see up can you see up top on Cattle Bank? You can. It's lovely. Right. I have fitted the two inch smaller belt. And it looks perfect to me. That's driving. And that's not. So there you go. We could maybe even do with the half inch smaller, but I think for now that'll do it. And it's easy to fit, it just slips on. So there's no point in messing them out with jockey pulleys and all sorts of different complexity. It's complex enough as it is, I think anyway. Right, but there we go. Let's give it a test. And there we go folks, you might not believe it, but the motor's running. And there it is in the low speed. As I say, we might need, when we get turning and we actually put load on these belts, we might need minor adjustment to, uh, to tension. But at the moment, it's just in that mode. Who knows? But at the moment, it's all working fine. There you go. Another one bites you dust. As they say in the movie business, it's a wrap. Right, I've just, what I'm going to do, my shoulder is really stiff today. Right, what I'm going to do is, this piece here is not square across. So what I'm going to do is take that tack off, get that square across, re-weld it, and then cut these two tops off, I think. And that one's badly corroded anyway and then start to work out a pivot and I think I'll take the pivot straight across the top if I get that straight and square then take a pivot straight across the top that might work anyway the first thing to do is to sort out my past mistakes which I seem to spend a lot of my life doing there we are folks doesn't that look better somewhere to start from let's be on once again folks we're using up the dregs the only piece of steel that fits the bill is the mankiest piece of steel in the shop well, actually it's not i'm sure i've got mankier steel than that never mind let's get it cut and ground up and there's our belt guard taking shape i forgot to video me welding but you wouldn't be that excited by it that's going to go in between there and that's just going to have a piece on the belt guard that lifts up. Oh, I suppose I could, I could put it. Yeah, yeah. All sorts of possibilities. All sorts of possibilities. No, that wouldn't work. 
No, that wants to be like that. And then we want a piece that sticks out, that comes down there. And we want a piece that sticks out the front for that. But that's just a piece of tin work. Right. So, it's going well. Let's see about some downward pieces. Well folks, the creativity has left me. I've got this far and I'm beginning to wonder whether I haven't made it too wide. I can of course just shorten it down to there. Uh, I've got some nice lightweight box section here which would come down there but of course when we get down to the lower part I've got the brake there and I really want to be there. So, I might go down and then taper across, and go down and taper across. I'm not sure yet. I think this is going to be a job for cardboard aided design. But I've looked at, I've looked at a lot of pictures and basically the, the belt guards that were fitted are obviously later than the original machine. The original machine ran completely without belt guards. So, there you go. So. Given the fact that it's half past four and I've run out of creativity, the juices are just not flowing, I'm going to call it a week for this week. So thank you all for watching, thank you for subscribing, remember if you haven't subscribed please do. Send me a like, send me a comment, ask me anything you like and I'll see you all next week. Bye now.